Welcome to another great video where I will be showing you a super useful tester you can purchase at a very reasonable cost. Just like in previous videos, I will be placing a link in the video description area where you can purchase what is shown in this video. The price is highly competitive and you will also be supporting my channel for other great, highly affordable and high user satisfaction rated test equipment for the hobbyist, please refer to the video description area. Let's get started. What you see over here is a battery internal resistance tester, also known as a battery impedance meter. This is an SMB8124, and this is something everybody should have if they're into building battery packs, repairing battery packs, or just want to assess the condition of rechargeable batteries. This internal resistance tester can be used for several different types of battery chemistries, nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, lithium ion, as well as lead acid batteries. Just like when electrolytic capacitors age, the ESR tends to rise. As the ESR rises, the capacitor will be prone to heating. The circuit that the capacitor is used in may not work properly, and ultimately the capacitor will fail. ESR meters operate at a different frequency using AC pulses between 50 kilohertz and 100. The tester you see here for batteries is using 1000 hertz or 1 kilohertz. Let's take a closer look at the meter. You have three positions right here. Off is on the left. You can measure resistance by sliding this to the center position. It uses ohms as well as milliohms. So if you're going to be testing a battery, which is a lithium ion, say it's an 11.1, .1, you would set it for 20 volts, and that uses the milliohm range, which is the center position. If you're going to be testing a battery less than 2 volts, then what you would do is you'd slide this to the top position. Now it's going to give you a reading in ohms, up to 100 volts, push it all the way down to the bottom. You can see the decimal moved over and you're still on the milliohm range. This also tests battery voltage. Slide it to the right. It'll go up to 100 volts, checking the battery voltage. Let's turn this back off. To get to the battery, it's very simple. You're going to grab this rubber jacket. You're going to pull it all the way back like this. Pop out the meter, and the door is right there takes a 9 volt battery. You have two wires leading to each one of the probes. And the end of the probe has more of this cross-hatched pointy cuts in it. You can see it there. and it appears to have a thin gold plating on it. Let's take a look at the manual. And here we go. And you can see over here, operation frequency is an AC signal, 1000 hertz plus or minus 10% by means of the four wire method. Here's your ranges. That's up to 2 volts, 2 volts and over, 20 to 100. The resolutions over here, internal resistance measurements, the weight, the dimensions, and you have full operation instructions. Also included with this meter, it's a nice little case, nothing spectacular, but it does serve the purpose. Strong, got these little latches here. And the inside just has some foam to keep the position of the meter. The wire wraps around here, the probes go there, and the unit goes there. Now what I'm going to do is test a few batteries to show you how this works. Keep in mind, as a battery ages, 
the more you cycle that battery, what's going to happen, the internal resistance of the battery is going to increase, resulting in less current output and a lower capacity. An ideal battery would have an internal resistance that is extremely, extremely low. Nickel cadmium batteries are usually the lowest. Nickel metal hydrides are the next ones that are low. And then lithium ions tend to be higher. And because they are higher with the internal resistance, they can generate more heat while in use. The perfect example of what you can use this for would be to rebuild battery packs. Pull this one out. Here you can see all the rechargeable cells. Usually what happens, some of the cells will go short. And I have revived many of these in the past. What you would do is you would take a 6 volt wall transformer, one that has a very low current output around 250 milliamps. If this one was shorted and it wasn't doing anything, pull that back. That's your positive. And up here, this side would be the negative. You would take the 6 volt wall transformer, strip the wires back, make sure it's a 6 volt DC output, take the positive wire, hold it on the positive terminal of the battery, take the negative, and you're going to touch it to the battery on the negative side. Hold it for a few seconds, let go, do it again, let go, do not hold it on there continuously. What's going to happen, the high voltage is going to break things up inside this battery and it will bring it back. The thing is, it may last a while, or it may only last the week, or it may last days, but you will bring the battery back. I have had batteries that have shorted out like that, and after giving them that voltage therapy, I've had packs last several months before I had to replace the batteries. If you had other batteries laying around, like here, all right, make sure they're the same rating, you can go to each one of these batteries. Let's pull this back right here. Let me slide the whole thing out if I can. All right, that's good enough. Pull that back right there. I can see the top edge is negative right there, positive. Let's take a look at this battery. It should be fully charged. I'm going to put this on the two volt range. And let's connect. 133. It's got a pretty good charge. Now keep in mind, when you check the internal resistance of rechargeable batteries, make sure they're fully charged and then allow them to sit for about an hour. And then you can go through each and every one of these and you'll learn which ones are good and which ones are bad using the meter. So now I'm going to put this to the ohms range right in the center. Leave that on 2 volt. Take the wires here. Let's put that there and that there. And you can see it's very low, 0.04 ohms. And that's fairly typical. That's a good battery. You would go to each and every one of these, and you may come across one that might be 0.10, 0.15. You want to make sure you check all of them, and you want to find the best of the batteries. So 0.04 was pretty good. If this is 0.03, that's 0.04, and they're all very close, you would keep those, and you would put other batteries in place of these that are rated the same capacity, and you would install them with these other batteries so they're all very similar. You don't want to have batteries that have lower resistance mixed with higher. They're not going to charge properly. Some are going to charge quicker than others. It's not going to be good. Now, if you want to connect two batteries in series, especially if they're lithium ion like this, usually you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to charge each one of these independently. But in the past, I have charged two together successfully. What you want to do is you want to measure the internal resistance of the batteries after you charge them and allow them to sit for a while. So let's put this back to voltage, 20, and let's take a look over here, get the glare out of that, there. 
let's see what this one is. 4.11, that's a pretty good charge. It's probably about 90% charged. What is this one? 411. All right. So you just don't go by the voltage when connecting them in series. That doesn't mean anything. You want to make sure the resistance of the cells are very closely matched. And that's why you need this meter to do that. So let's put this to the ohms range and leave that one on 20. Place that here. And it's around 78 to 80 milli ohms. All right, that's fairly typical of a battery like this. And keep in mind there is a circuit inside of here for overcharge and over discharge, and that does add to the reading that you just saw. Let's take a look at the other battery now, see how close it reads compared to the other one. Very good. So these are very closely matched. So you would have no problem putting both of these in series and charging them at 8.4 volts. Here are two batteries removed from another cordless drill. All the rest were bad, but using the meter I was able to identify that the internal resistance of these two batteries was good enough to keep for rebuilding other battery packs. So if we put one there, very low around 0 0.04, which is good. Let's take a look at this one. And right around the same. Let's take a look at the voltage. Should be around. Yep, that's got a nice charge. Let's take a look at this one. Nice charge. Now without the meter, you would just charge these up and try discharging them. And you could tell if it's holding the charge properly or not. But this is the best way to do it if you intend on connecting batteries in series to make your own battery pack. If you were to check a lead acid battery, one that's good, one that hasn't had any corrosion inside or sulfation and it's only a matter of months or a year old, you would get a reading like you see right here in this short clip. All right. And you can see it's very low, 4 milliohms. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.